Hello lovelies, welcome to Nark Free Formula, my name is Freedom, thank you for joining me. Uh, today's episode is um, about why you will never win with the narcissist um, and it's inspired by um, an email that I got sent um, by a lady called uh, Celeste. Um, I'll read, I won't read the, the whole email because it was a long one, I'll just read the, the part that matters. So in her email she says, if I tried really hard to be his ideal partner and was always on my best behaviour, would he be happy? Um, would he stay with a person like that? Now this is a this is a kind of common theme um, with a lot of the not a lot but you know with people when they are first um, being devalued and discarded um, by the narcissist. This, this kind of idea that if I change myself and make myself you know, a certain way, then he'll want me back and he'll stay with me. Um, what you need to understand is that there is no way of winning with them because the narcissistic um, personality disorder, the, the programming um, that goes on, is it's such an automatic thing. Their, their behaviour, they've done this stuff so often that it just is automatically triggered by certain things. So what I mean by this is, um, for example, if you tried your absolute very best to, to say nothing wrong, do nothing wrong, give him everything that he wants, um, you know, look a certain way, act a certain way, dress a certain way, talk a certain way, think a certain way. I mean, other than being like absolutely exhausting and no way for anyone to live, um, it is totally futile. Um, enough will never be enough for a narcissist. They will always want more. You can, you know, it's like, it's like, um, you know, when you think about, I don't know, your favourite meal or dish or treat okay let's go with your favorite treat let's go with chocolate my favorite treat is chocolate <laughs> but you couldn't tell that and um anyhow so right too much chocolate i mean if you had chocolate 24 7 7 days a week um that would no longer be be a treat and you know and i'm a healthy person i'm not a narcissist so when you have a narcissist they will tell you that if you act this way that I could put up with you and I could love you and whatever. But the fact of the matter is, just like chocolate, um, they would get bored, they would want something different, and they would start craving, you know, uh, meat and vegetables and healthy food, all the stuff that you couldn't imagine that a narcissist would want. All right, this is the other thing. Narcissists have this overwhelming sense of entitlement um, and you would undoubtedly accidentally trip them up or trigger them in some way. So sooner or later, you're going to accidentally make them wait, for example, walk in front of them, you know, actually cut them off when they're speaking, um, offend them in some way. You might try and do something for them that, in their mind, um, shows that you're trying to control the situation. You have to understand, it's not the um, events, it's not the people, it's not the things in life. It's the way the narcissist interprets these things. So you may think you're doing everything right, but the narcissists, their interpretation, it's like how they see the world, that's what the problem is. You know, it's not what's there, it's how they are interpreting it. And you have to understand that the, the way they see the world is that people are either, you know, victims or abusers. Um, and there's no kind of in between, there's no grey zone. You're either on top or below someone. I've said it before, um, and I'll say it again, narcissists are like dogs. Dogs are hierarchical creatures they live in a pack there is no equality you're either above or below um, and how you usually find out where you stand is you know if if you feed your dogs out of one food bowl 
there's one dog that's going to go in first and he's going to growl and scare the others away um, and the biggest dog is usually the kind of alpha not always though it doesn't always have to be about size um, but you know dogs are hierarchical creatures there is no equality in a dog pack and it's the same thing with narcissists they don't see anyone as being equals they when they meet someone um, they gauge that person to assess whether they are above them or below them and if they are below them they want to think about how they can get above them they actually will look at that person and determine what it is that that person has that makes them above the narcissist and how to get it from them you know they're kind of quite competitive with all this stuff because you've got to remember there's this kind of um, chronically bored mentality going on they're bored they get bored of normal everyday average life they don't want to be normal normal is boring to them and so even if you were trying your very best to do everything right and you were running you know running life like this well-oiled machine even that um, would be boring for them they would have to break up the monotony of that um, by devaluing and discarding you like I said it's just there's there's no kind of um, way to win with the narcissist at all um, you can't please them anything you do will ultimately you know be interpreted differently through the narcissist lens and I'm sure most of you listening um, would have experienced at least one occasion where you've done something for them and they have misinterpreted it as and made it into something that it just wasn't you know they managed to twist and manipulate things half the time it's because they feel that way the other half of the time they're just trying to be manipulative because they've got somewhere to go and something to do so they need to start a fight but as I say there's just no way of winning you can't dim your own light enough um, it's like makeup there we go it's like makeup so with my ex every single time I put on makeup he would say who are you dressing up for so I learned to stop wearing makeup and then the next set of complaints is um, you know uh, no what did you say it wasn't even that it was then I stopped wearing makeup and I when I wore makeup again he said oh that's the reason that I fell in love with you kind of implying that I was better with makeup um, and yet like I said when I did wear makeup he made it out that I was doing it for other people so that's the kind of thing that they do it's just there's no way of winning with them doesn't matter what you do doesn't matter how high you you know put them up um, you know how good you make them feel the fact is they don't want to feel good they like feeling bad they like the arguments it gives them fuel um, and so that's what they're going to try and do is create arguments so there's just like I said there's just no way of winning even if you absolutely tried uh, to be this unrealistic idealistic version of yourself it might work for a little while it won't work as a long-term strategy at all and as I said who like think about that think about what it would actually take um, you know it would be overwhelming and I do know because on some level I think I did that myself when I was in my situation ship I think I literally gave so much leeway um, and I did so much of what he wanted how he wanted when he wanted um, you know and I gave so much of myself and I allowed him to kind of control and mold and manipulate me into being a certain version of myself and so yes like I said yes it will work on uh, to some extent for you know for some amount of time but it's not a long-term strategy and at some point you're gonna get so sick and tired of pandering to you know a man child um, you know there's going to be a part of you that just cannot betray yourself any longer um, and there's going to be a part of you that will just want to take a stand stand up for yourself you know 
because let's face it, when you're being devalued by someone, um, and for a lot of us, like I said, you know, we've kind of downplayed ourselves and we're being devalued by someone who maybe isn't as smart as us or, you know, isn't, um, and they're just not a necessarily good people. And for them to be saying there's something wrong with us, it's hard to hold your lip. You know, it's hard to not say something. So the idea of spending a life where you're never answering back, you're never, um, you know, addressing their allegations, because you'd have to take a whole lot of, um, there'd be so many accusations and allegations levelled at you throughout the time that you spent together. You know, from you looked at that, that waiter the wrong way, to I saw you coming out of the bathroom at, as that man at the same time. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, and yeah, so not being able to defend yourself against those kind of accusations and allegations, it would be absolutely exhausting. So, Celeste Stelling, I would uh, yeah, seriously suggest that you just forget about that as a concept. Um, you know, getting narc free is not easy, there's no doubt. Um, but once you actually do get narc free, you will realise that what you're living through right now, it's just some kind of sick game. None of this is real. You know, this is just uh, an illusion. It's all fake. It's all false. It's all an illusion. And I hope that you get free from it all. All right, lovelies. Take care. Get nut free. Stay nut free. Bye.